Uh, the heat has been on this summer. We know that last month, one of the top 10 hottest Junes in Minnesota history, July. Well, Mike showed us some data this morning to show just how hot it has been already. Uh, but you looked into why the heat makes us feel crummy. Right. And, you know, and I'm not just like heat stroke or heat exhaustion. You, I mean, Mike, you can tell us better than I can. We had that stretch last week of that really hot weather that wasn't letting up overnight. And I, people just sort of felt, oh, right. you just kind of felt sluggish. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think I was wrong, right, in, in how hot it was over that past week and kind of that longer stretch. No, so going back uh, two weeks from this pet from Wednesday from a couple of days ago and the two weeks prior, that was the sixth hottest such stretch on record in the Twin Cities going back to 1873. So you're not wrong yeah. and you're also not wrong that it's really the overnight period where where and when we don't have like a recovery where temperatures cool off a little bit. Right. That's when things get really, really stressful, not only mentally, but physically on your body as well. Right. And then you throw the humidity in there. Uh, which it was so humid then, and that makes it so much worse. So, you know, we talked to a doctor about this because a, one of the big ways that we get rid of heat out of our body is, is through sweating. And what happens is the sweat kind of then, the heat is released while the sweat evaporates into the air. But if the air is so humid and so moist, it's really hard for that sweat to then evaporate and take that heat away from our bodies. Mm. I feel like people complain when it's really cold that that makes them miserable. Right. And now, is it it's, different? Is it one worse than the other? Or is it that we're always just complaining because extreme weather does have an effect on your body? Well, I, it, Mike, it, it is true that heat really is sort of the one of the worst things in terms of deaths in, in the world, really, when it comes to heat, when it comes to heat stroke, yeah. when it comes to heat exhaustion. Heat is the biggest weather killer in right. the world, more than any tornado or hurricane or lightning or anything yeah. like that. And there is some truth to the anecdote that, you know, you can always put more clothes on in the right. winter, but you can only take so much off during the summer. And that, I mean, that is a real thing. Right. It's interesting, though, Jason, you talk about sort of the hot and the cold, and our body wants us to be in this, you know, narrow range here. Yeah. And so when it's cold, our body reacts. It's when we're hot, the body does the opposite of what it does in the cold. So what's happening is the brain says, look, I need to get all my blood, all the blood flow out to the skin so I can start releasing that heat. Huh. Well, what happens is when you get all the blood out to the skin, it's not going into sort of the head and the, the heart and the stomach, which is why you can get those, those stomach aches which yeah. is why your heart rate goes up and you start or to get tired or get lightheaded there. And if that goes on and on and on, that's where the heat stroke and the heat exhaustion come in. So it, it, is, it is a reality. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. sorry for all you it's, guys who have to deal with this. Well, it's, it's at least no cooler fun. now, right? It's going to be a better, me. I feel a better stretch of weather. I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, we have a better in stretch of weather ahead. It's, it's, <laughs> it's still going to be hot. Uh, but it's not going to be quite as hot, and that AC won't be working quite as hard. We, we are looking at a mostly